All right, welcome everybody to the Legend Finance Accounting Recruiting Session. Uh, I'm really pleased to see so many students here to learn about careers in the finance and accounting field and what working with a staffing agency might do for you in your career. I think that personally, those are some great opportunities for students to get experience right when you finish uh, and as you're thinking about things that you wanna do after you graduate. Uh, folks that work in staffing agencies are among the most knowledgeable for the job market more broadly, but then when they specialize in a particular field, that can be even more helpful to you. And so I'm really pleased that we get to hear from one of those folks today, Amar Green, who is the market manager for Legend, which is the finance and accounting division for Roth Staffing, one of the largest staffing agencies in the country. So without further ado, Amar, I'm going to turn it over to you and uh, let you take it from here. Thank you so much. I appreciate that intro. How's everybody doing today? Um, my name is Amar Green. I'm the market manager here with Legend Finance and Accounting Staffing. Um, I'm a former accountant. I used to work for E-Trade Financial, Freddie Mac, and the Mills Corporation, which is they used to uh, oversee accounting for Potomac Mills and Arundel Mills. Um, and I got into this business 14 years ago. So um, I got into this business. Um, I was looking for a job and I went into an agency and I was interviewed and hired on the spot. And I've been in it, I've been in this business for 14 years ever since. Um, right now, in you know, the current climate that we are in, you know, I see I partner with uh, clients and I partner with candidates and to find the match and to uh, culture fit um, expertise as far as what you can do and what clients are looking for, interview prep, um, everything. So you know, it's nothing wrong with having a, I would say like a job mentor or a job coach. Um, and that's what an agency like ours can do for you. Um, so one of the reasons why I, I wanted to partner with Catholic University is because I wanted to um, talk to people as far as students before you all come out in the job market and actually partner with you and help you find opportunities before you even step off the campus. So um, that's one of my main reasons why I wanted to partner with Catholic University. And actually I've worked with you all before on the staffing side. So I actually have been on your campus many times. Um, I always like how the, uh, the Catholic, um, your own uh, police uh, patrol the, the campus and make sure you're parked correctly and everything so those guys don't play. So um, I've always appreciated that. So that's what that's what we can offer. I know um, right now with unemployment being super low at 3.9%, the biggest challenge we're having right now is finding candidates for jobs and people who, you know, it's funny, I was talking to a guy yesterday and um, the job market, the candidate job market has changed. And what I mean by that is, is that it was a time where people just would go, okay, I interview, I get the job, I go into an office. That has totally changed. People now are coming and saying, I want 100% remote. I want to be able to live wherever I want to live in the country and be able to work wherever I want to work. So, and some employers are getting the message and some aren't. Some are still, I would say back in 2019. Um, and some are coming, uh, some, some are coming into the future saying, you know what, this has to change. In order for us to find great talent, we have to be a little bit more flexible and offer more than just benefits to um, our potential assets, which are our employees. So um, with that being said, um, I am definitely one of the, you know, open this up, the open forum to talk to people. And if you guys have any questions, I'm definitely ready to answer any questions and talk to you. And let's make this a uh, interactive conversation. Thanks, Amar. Uh, students, while you're thinking about uh, what you want to ask, you can either uh, chat it to me and I'm happy to ask it uh, if you want to, you know, if you're uh, a little shy about asking a question or you can come off of mute and ask, that's perfectly fine. But maybe to kick us off, Amar, uh, can you tell us what uh, industries are you seeing the biggest movement in right now uh, as far as need in the D.C. area? I would say right now our greatest need right now is with CPA firms. So CPA firms are going into tax season and they need everything from junior associates to senior auditors to tax accountants. Um, I just got off the phone with a, uh, a bio company and they have 96 positions open. Everything from um, IT to accounting and finance, scientists, um, everyone is at a deficit for hiring right now, everyone. So there's not a, I'm sure when you guys leave off the campus or leave out of your houses, if you're taking online school and you're not on campus, 
and you go anywhere to get service, you see a help wanted sign. So it just goes to show you where we're at and we're still recovering from the pandemic that we're still in. So um, that's, I, I would say, I wouldn't give it one industry or sector. I would say it's across the board, honestly. So let me, let me retract that and just say it's across the entire board. Great, thanks for that. I had a question come in on the chat. Uh, as a student about to graduate, what are some of the things that can make them stand out when they're applying? I would say that when you make sure you have a LinkedIn profile, make sure your LinkedIn profile has a picture, make sure that um, you have a professional picture on there. I would say make sure that your resume matches what's on your LinkedIn profile. Um, I would also say ask people for some recommendations if you've done any internships or former employers that you've worked for to go onto your LinkedIn profile and put recommendations on there. Um, I would say also to make yourself stand out. I would say also just more than just sending a resume, um, partnering with an agency, number one, because there's a workaround. So instead of you just sending your resume and hoping that an algorithm picks up certain keywords in your resume to put it towards a recruiter, have somebody being an advocate for you that can literally pick up a, your, your resume and make phone calls on your behalf to get you in front of the right people in that company. Every agency has a select group of clients that they work for and some that you may have never heard of. So then that way that person can actually um, uh, be an advocate for you. And also when you do a Zoom interview with someone or a Microsoft Teams, make sure you're professionally dressed. That says a lot. In this environment, you know, I know we're all like at home and, you know, we don't get to see each other and life has changed, but those small little things go the extra mile. Great, thanks for that. Students, uh, a lot of good tips there. Uh, jot some of those down. Um, another question has come in. A uh, student says that they've heard about temporary positions. Mm -hmm. um, is that popular right now? Can students get in on that? I think that's kind of the gist of the question. Yes, absolutely. So. Um, it's funny, the client I was just talking to today that has the 96 positions open, um, we were, he was asking us about bringing people in on attempt to hire basis. And what I was advising him was, yes, we can help you with that, but that pool of people is very small. There's not a lot of people out here right now that are just sitting on the bench looking for a job. And the direct hire pool is more plentiful. So to answer your question, yes. It, you know, you can always I, I, attempt to hire, we call it the try before you buy. So before you pull the trigger and hire someone or before you take that job in that company, you try before you get hired and you say, okay, is this a culture? Is this an environment? Is this a boss that I want to work for? Because people don't leave companies, they leave bosses. So you want to make sure when you're partnering with a company that this person is a mentor, they're helping to guide you they're helping, you're seeing people in that department get promoted, and you're also being exposed to new things that can help you build your resume. Sure, that, that was kind of a long answer. No, that's that's really helpful. Your line there, people don't leave companies, they leave bosses. Uh, personally experienced that. And so students, I'm sure if you've interned anywhere, uh, you've either had a great experience and uh, that doesn't resonate, or if you've had a, maybe a negative experience, you can understand that. Um, on the intern side uh, uh, of that, um, sophomore students wondering, uh, do you work with interns? And if so, where's the most need for, for interns right now? So for me, yes, we do work for intern. We do work with interns. So every year around, uh, I would say right around February, we start reaching out to, uh, to um, colleges and preferably my specialty is accounting and finance. So I will reach out to, um, you know, department heads of accounting and finance in schools and say, who are some of your kids that are looking for internships and give me students with the best grades, get into class on time, the, give me the kids who want it. And then what I'll do is I'll start making calls to some of my clients to say, hey, I have a student who, let's say Catholic, he's, he's a sophomore at Catholic University. He's looking to grow his resume. He's looking to grow his skill set. Um, and he's looking to come in and work. And um, we can definitely get you some income on that where you can earn some money for the summer. Uh, in addition, you get to build your skill set. In addition, 
you get to go in there and do more than just provide a resume for a future employer. You get to go in there and show, I call it the working interview every single day. So every day while you're working, they're interviewing you to make sure when you graduate to see if you're someone they should hire. Excellent. Well, that's good news. I see some uh, current juniors in uh, the audience today. So that's uh, good news for you guys. Um, I have Amar's information. Uh, if you guys want to reach out to me afterwards or Amar, if you're comfortable, if you wouldn't mind putting that in the chat, um, if any sure. student wants to reach out to you. Absolutely. Um, I'll make sure I put it in the chat. Yeah, I appreciate that. Um, another follow up on the intern question is what types of finance and accounting roles are interns doing? I would say everything from accounting clerk, sometimes junior accountant work, sometimes just AP. So it could be a little bit of everything. Sometimes it could be a CPA firm that's looking to get caught up after tax season and still dealing with some stuff and they need somebody to, uh, to do filing or what have you. So it could be a mixture of anything. I mean, listen, if you could get your foot in the door, I remember when I wanted a job at uh, Freddie Mac. Um, and uh, I literally was like, I was so excited to just get the interview. I was like, if you guys need me to come in here and literally sweep up the floor, I'll do it because there's something I need to learn here. And I stayed there for two years and I had one of the best experiences of my life. Um, so, you know, it's literally, you know, I would say everything um, from accounting clerk, AP, so maybe some bookkeeping work. Um, funny as I have a client right now that is a air filtration a producer in PG County that's actually looking for basically like a new grad um, that they'll train um, to come in and do accounting work for them. So just imagine if you could be someone that's interned for them and then it's like, okay, now it's time for them to pull the trigger and hire you. You could potentially one day be their CFO. That sounds great. I've talked with many students who want to get on that track. So students, uh, it's worth following up on. Um, especially it sounds like if you're about to graduate. Uh, another question has come in. Uh, let me try to summarize it here. Uh, I think the, the gist of it is this. Uh, who are your clients? So is it mostly nonprofit, for-profit, government? Where are you placing people? So that's a great question. So here's the thing with staffing. We work with everybody. So whether it's government contracting, nonprofit, um, bio companies, for-profit, non-profit, everyone. So I'm headquartered here in Arlington, Virginia. In Arlington, I can throw a rock out my window and I can hit everything in one building from a non-profit to a uh, for-profit to a $1 billion or more government contractor. So the DC metro area is one of the best places for employment because you have everything. So it's not like you're just in a, like a, a Wilmington, Delaware, where it's all banking or in uh, Manhattan, where it's all financial services, banking, hedge funds, et cetera. So we work with everyone. Actually, um, I just worked with a client in Florida where they were looking for a VC uh, venture capital um, um, candidates for a, um, to help with their green initiative. So with the Biden infrastructure bill, there's the huge green infrastructure piece to that. And they wanna be one of the companies to actually go out there and find a new technology and build on that. And this was starting salary of 280, signing bonus of 50,000, up with potential of $500,000 a year. Excellent. Thanks for that overview. No worries. Students, uh, if you have any more questions, feel free to send them in to me or to come off mute. Um, again, uh, maybe you can follow up here from me uh, for entry level positions that you do placement in. Can you give students a salary range for what to expect? How, how should they value themselves as they're about to enter the job market? Entry level positions, I would just say, uh, you know, it. that's kind of a hard question to answer. And the reason why a client just asked me that and, you know, uh, it all depends. Like the company is going to, the company is going to have a budget and they're going to tell you what they can pay. So for example, um, there could be a company out here paying between 20 to $25 an hour for your for, for entry level job. There are also some companies out here paying somewhere between 17 to $19 an hour for an entry level job. It all depends on what you're willing to take and how flexible you are and how bad you want to get your foot in the door. So if you want to get your foot in the door, 
and you can afford to take a little bit of a hit on pay to get the experience, to pick it up later in another job, go for it. Um, but, if, but if you can't, you know, I would say if, that, if you have a hard number you have to stick with to take care of yourself and pay your bills and survive, then, you know, you got to do that. But, you know, right now, um, there are some clients that are paying above average minimum, um, I would say um, uh, between 20, 25, somewhere up to 30. And then you have, you have, you do have some clients that are like, hey, look, I can only do $19 an hour. Can you find me somewhere? Um, so it all depends on what you can take and what you're able to make. Good. Thank you. And students, just a plug for the Office of Career Development, we can help you kind of assess all of those things if you want to do a career coaching meeting with uh, Julie or Dan. Um, another question has come in, Amar. Uh, what skills do you see your uh, employer clients most wanting for these finance and accounting roles? Is it like Excel or programming? What, what are you seeing? Excel, huge. Pivot tables, they want you to be a master in Excel. So even if you can get an Excel certification, that's just one more thing you have over another candidate. Um, a lot of times what, we, what we're seeing is they're looking for someone in that staff accountant range, even junior accountants, so someone that can do GL work, reconciliations. Um, if you can get Dell Tech certified, Dell Tech is a government contracting software. We're in, a, we're in a city where the government pretty much is all over the place and most of the companies service in the government contracting sector. So if you have those certifications, your money. Excellent. There you go, students. You've heard it from another place. Work on those Excel skills. Yep. Um, maybe a follow-up on that is beyond the Excel, is there like any specialized other softwares that uh, are kind of like common around DC or maybe for a particular industry? Yeah, I was, well, I would say if they um, ADP payroll, you can get uh, some ADP payroll experience. QuickBooks is always a good one. So those are going to be like your small to mid-sized companies. Um, maybe anywhere between 20 to 50 employees, everything above that. So you're talking about Dell Tech, Microsoft Dynamics. Uh, you're talking about Timberline is more on the construction side. So if you have Timberline experience, you'll, you know, pretty much everything from Folger Pratt to uh, Rand Construction, um, all those companies use that software. Um, so I would say within those software skills, if you can pick up on some of those or if they offer, if you go to their website and they offer a training or something, I would say take it, especially free or go to YouTube University. It's free. You can go in there and always just plug in how to use something. Because a lot of times when client, when candidates uh, or tell me, well, I've never used that software, I'll say, okay, well, you understand the, the, the core basics of what needs to be done, the debits and credits. So why don't you go online and do a YouTube refresher and type in how to use this software. And I say, it's free right there. It will show you. So there is no such thing as, I don't know. It's just, you haven't typed it into the internet yet. Yeah, that's right. And students, uh, while you're a student at Catholic University, you get LinkedIn learning courses for free as well, which has a lot of those too, as Amar was just saying. Um, Absolutely. So we've curated some lists for you. You can always reach out to us and happy to fill those in for you. And actually we offer a free CPE event once a month. Um, and if you want, Brett, I could send that to you. You can send it out to any of the students. They can actually log in. They can learn about tax. They can learn about certain things that people have to get to keep their CPA license. So then that way you can keep yourself abreast of that. And you have, again, a competitive advantage in the uh, employment market. And it's free. Fantastic. Yes, please do send that over. And I'll make sure that that gets out. Absolutely. Uh, another question from students, uh, what is the, could you just maybe, uh, this is a better way to put it, uh, can you tell us more about Legend? What's the history, what's the culture, what's its mission? So yeah, so culture, we are a staffing company that was started in Orange County, California, um, back in, I would say, 1998, um, started off in Huntington Beach, California, um, We've since grown all the way to the East Coast. Uh, I've been with the company now three years. Uh, we have three divisions. So you have Legend Finance and Accounting, you have Legend Technology, and you have Ultimate that handles everything outside of accounting and finance and um, uh, technology. Um, 
we don't call our uh, em employees who work with us, we don't call them temps or consultants, we call them ambassadors. And I love that about us because the, your ambassador is the face of your company working for that client. And everything that client's gonna know about you is gonna be through that ambassador. So our mission is to make lives better for the people who we serve and the clients that we serve. So, and it's to make sure that we're not like the rest, but we are the best and to make sure that we help the people that we're serving. Great, thank you for that. All right, let's see, well, maybe we'll pause. I don't have any other questions in the chat. Maybe we'll take a few beats here and pause and see if students have any other questions. No worries. Okay, well, uh, Amar, thanks so much for your time. Uh, any last thoughts or uh, anything that students should know if they wanna begin working with Legend in their job and internship searches? Yes, actually, I'm going to send you guys my uh, contact information. If you want, you can link in with me on LinkedIn. It's just my first and last name, Amar Green. Um, and um, if you want to work with me, please send over a copy of your resume. Let's set, up a, let's set up a time to talk. Or if you want just some coaching, just give me a phone call. Um, you know, I'm always willing to have a conversation with someone to help coach them in their job uh, process. Or if you know someone else that is looking, please refer them over. We can always take a referral or help someone else out. So, and I'll put my information. How long will the chat be up once we, um, will it will it, will it go away once we hit leave? It will, if you wanna uh, put it in there, uh, we'll leave everything open for uh, a minute or so after we wrap up so everybody can get it. All right, excellent. I'll make sure I put it in there. So I'll start typing it as I'm talking. Perfect. And students, if you miss it uh, or you misplace it or uh, have any other issues, you can reach out to me and I'm happy to make sure that you get in touch with Amar. Well, perfect. Well, thanks everybody for joining us this afternoon and especially you, Amar. Thanks for taking time uh, to with us today at Catholic University. Students, it's good to see so many of you. I uh, hope your first week of classes has gone well, albeit remotely. Looking forward to seeing some of you around campus. Uh, I see Amar's got his contact information there. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and sign off. Uh, if you wanna get his information, I'm gonna leave the Zoom call open for just another minute and then uh, we can wrap up. But thanks everybody. Thanks, Amar. Thank, Thank you. you all. Everyone have a great day.